This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 10 5 20. This is show number 131. Well, Nick, uh, you know, Trump is recovering and so is the market, huh? Yeah, you got a, a pretty good diagnosis uh, uh, or pretty good uh, view of uh, President Trump rebounding, and so is the market right now. So when you look at the S&P 500 today, uh, not bad action overall. The markets are higher across the board. The S&P 500 up $42.85 as we speak. That's a gain of 1.28%. But the real story here today is the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 is having a booming day. If you look at the IWM, which is the ETF for the Russell, that's up 1.9%. And uh, that's a tremendous move because Russell represents small cap companies in the United States. And it's very, very positive when the Russell 2000 shows leadership. And not only today, but it also showed leadership on Friday. And um, that's something that really caught my eye. Um, you know, people go uh, when when they want to invest in Russell, they're investing in real growth because they, these companies don't pay any dividends. They're very small. Uh, they're trying to break their way in to become a big company. So, again, um, if you're going to look for ultimate growth, you're going to the Russell 2000. And I saw really good action in the Russell on Friday, and I'm seeing really good action in the Russell today. And that's that's pretty positive for the markets right now. So we're, we could potentially be looking at a rotation of sectors? Yeah, well, if you look at Friday, the tech-heavy uh, NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 were absolutely decimated. They were hammered down by more than 2%. I mean, they could not bounce at all on Friday. Uh, so that was that was very, very nerve-wracking because, wow, the NASDAQ's breaking down. That's where the leadership is. But guess what? Money went into the financial stocks. Money went into the energy stocks. And that was even with crude oil being down. Uh, money went into a lot of industrials. Money went back into copper. I mean, when money goes at the copper that's that's pretty good you know you want to see something like that uh, a lot of retail names are higher today you have a lot of retailers higher as well um now this could be the trump bounce because the markets are rejoicing that he's not very sick and maybe you know he he's on on his way to a full recovery so the markets could be bouncing on that which i think they probably are you also have chatter of a stimulus plan but that has gone nowhere um <clears throat> so i'm not going to put much stock into the the government stimulus plan between the dems and the republicans I, I just don't see them coming uh, to a kumbaya moment right now. Eventually, they will have to, but uh, they haven't done that at all. So I think this is probably a Trump rally here today. Uh, but overall, I, I like everything that I'm seeing. Even today, you have the, the NASDAQ rebounding quite nicely, up 1.65% at the moment. So that's a good day today. But we saw them really get hammered on Friday. Lots of uh, leading stocks were down, but money went into other areas. And we always talk about when money goes into other sectors, it, it broadens out the market. And that's always a positive. Now, with that being said, Kerry, I still think um, we're going to have some choppiness here going into the election. I don't think this is just going to go straight up in a straight line. I think we're going to still experience a lot of whippiness, a lot of choppiness. But that that's to be expected in this highly contested election year. Yeah, well, you've been saying it for a while. And we're seeing it, and no doubt. But so Trump's recovery overall, does his bout with COVID make him more likely to get elected or less likely to get elected? I don't know if how much of an effect that's really going to have on him, but I would think now that he's actually contracted the virus, um, he's probably got a lot to say, a lot more to say about it. So, you know, uh, again, he's not uh, young by any stretch. He's 74 years old, I believe. So if he comes through this and, and you know, and, and beats it, I mean, he didn't do it with a vaccine. He did it with some therapeutics out here. And there looks to be like there are a lot more therapeutics in the pipeline line and you may not even need a vaccine so i think that's a very very good positive for trump and for the market hey, and that could be the final lesson of the story is that uh, hey um we don't need no stinking vaccine maybe all we need are these therapeutics and and yeah the recovery is so dramatic and so fast between the rem dems of rem 
and this uh, experimental immune therapy that he's getting. I mean, yeah, the guy was out of the hospital room. And of course, well, we won't get into the political ramifications so much other than other than uh, the outcome for the election. But it was just remarkable uh, the number of people, even they closed down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan in uh, in his honor. I, I saw the uh, Trump parade there in New York City. Who would ever think Mario Cuomo just about uh, three weeks ago said he would need uh, an army to go into New York City. They wouldn't welcome him. Here it is, you know, in the middle of New York City, uh, you have a, a Trump parade with uh, tens of thousands of people. So yeah, isn't it, that it was amazing. Huh? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing to see. And uh, again, um, you know, politics at its finest or at its worst. Yeah, at its lowest, I would say. But look, uh, we're looking at this, we're looking what's happening, and by the way, it's Andy Cuomo, but I forgive you for confusing the two because, well, maybe Mario was a little smarter than Andy, but outside of that, they're pretty much identical. Uh, just looking at it, though, it's it's just staggers the imagination, the situation that we're in. The election, maybe it's going to buy us a little bit of time, but eventually all the uh, everything we're encountering uh, financially deficits and all that, they're going to have to be addressed one way or the other, right? Absolutely. And um, right now, we have to keep in mind, there's a lot of money printing or stimulus by the central bank. I know they're talking about a stimulus plan between the Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, Yeah, fiscal. But the reality of it is the Fed has already provided so much stimulus. So that, that really has been the catalyst, in my opinion, the main catalyst for the market. We still have a huge unemployment number out there that, you know, will take another year and a half at this rate uh, to be fixed or to get us back to where we were. But but that's how things are. I mean, honestly, you know, shutting down the economy uh, the way we did it for, you know, and and this goes back to, you know, the the doctors and uh, the Fauci's and and the WHO and all these. Dr. Fraudshee. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could call them whatever we want, but you know, looking back now, it, it was the worst thing we ever did, right? So, oh, yeah. you said um, that I think from the get go. You and I said it from the get. go Yeah, we talked about that since March, right? And uh, this is, you know, now coming to fruition. And and again, uh, you know, I look back and I've studied a lot of, you know, past markets, past plagues. Even in 1918, they never shut down the economy. So, you know, I mean, that that was a much worse uh, plague than this one. Um, now, I'm not making you know, light of it. People have died over this and and it's, it's a terrible, terrible uh, virus, you know, but I mean, you have to, you have to continue to work. You have to continue to, to march on what's going on in New York city. There's, I I don't even know how many thousands of restaurants will never reopen. I have a lot of percent. They said, or as much as 50% will never open, reopen. Yeah. It's a huge number. And and I'm from New York city and I have a lot of friends that are in the restaurant business that own businesses there and they're done. They're, they're absolutely done. They're going to be on the bankruptcy line. So um, I I hate to see that. And I don't think it had to happen. I don't think it should have happened, but I'm only a small voice in a big pond. So um, again, you know, we we need to learn from our mistakes, but we don't need to go back and repeat them. And, And what's going on in New York city, even right now to this very day is 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 a tragedy it's terrible it's really disgusting and uh, hey we've we've talked enough about that but let's look at at gold and silver they're up uh, quite a bit today pulled back a little bit but they took off with a shot today yeah gold is up another eight dollars today gold futures and then you have um silver futures also up another one and a half percent so i mean they're hanging in there but remember what i said when the markets pop gold and silver go with them uh you know that's how they're trading right now they're trading right in tandem with the overall market indexes and you know um again they'll be a little they'll be choppy here just like the markets will be choppy but they are setting up they're doing exactly i mean i love what what gold is doing i can't overstate it i i think i've been on this on the program saying hey you know we want want to just see a lot of backing and filling right now do more of it give me another month of it and then we're setting up to go a lot higher in gold q4 is generally the end of q4 when gold really takes off generally gold and silver seasonality indian wedding season chinese new year all these things generally push gold higher it used to be earlier used to be earlier in the quarter it's now been pushed off to late q4 early Q1. So probably we're going to see that here. 
Yeah, I mean, right now, if you go back even to 2014, we had a great bounce in November all the way up to January. Then if you go back to 2015, market had a great bounce in December, and that lasted all the way up into July of the following year, into 2016. Then in 2016, again, it was a December rally. Um, so seasonality-wise, it's starting to repeat. Um, 2018, a little early, started in, in, in August, but had a great run into the new year, then really consolidated before breaking out and in 2019 and then consolidated again in 2019 and rallied up in in December and January so you know we're coming into you know we're in October now so we could get two more months on the sidelines with gold I mean the odds of of another December January rally are, are setting up picture perfect yeah it's it's bullish times for the metal and the stocks have been holding up quite well I mean you do see a lot of juniors got hit between 20% and a third of their price. But they had made such humongous runs, Nick, that they were due for this pullback. You're not telling me anything, Kerry. I, yeah, I know I it. Know. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in that camp that they're still holding up really, really well. And I, I just want to see more consolidation because if we consolidate, we see more consolidation, you're going to have, you know, one of the greatest trades on your hands. I know a lot of people think, whoa, the move from March to uh, to September was so spectacular. How could we have, you know, an even better move? And I, I'm telling you, you can. Um, <clears throat> even if you look at the price of gold itself and you just look at that big, big pattern that's out there. We call this, you know, an ABC or a zigzag up or symmetrical move. I mean, that takes gold futures to basically, you know, 2,800. Um, and that's a conservative estimate. I'm not, I'm not going higher or I'm just giving you the exact symmetry of the pattern from 99 to 2011. So there's real good, um, there's real good odds here that we, we got another major run in gold very shortly. And in silver too, like you've said numerous times, silver is rallying off of its low whereas gold is rallying off of its new all-time high. So we're going to see something really spectacular in silver. That's right. Silver is by far my favorite. I've been, we've been on the program, you know, doing the program saying, I've been saying silver is where you want to be. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. And just look at, just look at the way silver's held up recently. It's been, it's been amazing. So, you know, silver has had that big sharp sell off in the month of September, but I mean, it, it went parabolic. It's supposed to do that. It's going to make major moves here. It could be a lot silver. It's kind of following that pattern, and we could see huge move. Anyways, that's it for today. Go over to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take a look at Nick's trading record. Take a look at the Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Send us your emails, kl at KerryLutz.com. Sounds good, Kerry. All right, Nick, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01. 